All right, thank you, and welcome to Managing Anxiety. My name is Alicia. I'm one of the academic coaches in Student Success and Retention Office. And I'm Nolan Nicholas, one of the academic coaches. So before I start, does anybody have any idea what exactly anxiety is? Anybody want to take a guess? The feeling, the pit in your stomach, yes. Anticipation of a future event. Very good, let's go over. So anxiety is the feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease. So basically, according to the DSM-5, anxiety is the anticipation of a future event. So sometimes it's excessive, it's ongoing anxiety, constant worrying in your day-to-day -day actions, and that can be a sign of generalized anxiety disorder. So when you're going about your day, are you worrying, oh man, I gotta get to work because I gotta make money so I can pay my car insurance? Are you worrying, oh man, I gotta get to class because I didn't study for a test, but I gotta get on my way so that way I know what I'm doing. So it's constant, constant. Your brain's constantly firing off. What am I doing? What do I need to be doing? Where am I going? How are things going? So kind of just what I just said. So with general anxiety disorder, you basically worry excessively about things that are unlikely to happen or they feel tense. You have fear so constant that they begin to interfere with your ability to function and relax. So with generalized anxiety disorder, it can be very physically and mentally exhausting. When your brain cannot shut down, sometimes it even begins to interfere with your sleep. It wears down your body. It could wear down your energy because your brain just cannot shut off. People with general anxiety disorder, they usually worry about the same thing that other people do. They worry about health issues, money issues, family issues. The only thing is, is that they're doing it at a much higher level. So they're, whereas normal people, most people can think about a situation and eventually think about a solution and move on, generalized anxiety disorder, it, they can never shut down. They can never stop worrying about that one issue. So some common signs of excessive anxiety disorder, um, constant worry, thoughts running through your head. So kind of like what we said, constantly worrying maybe for school. I, I, I don't know what exam I'm taking. I have to run over here. I don't know what I'm doing with this test. Intrusive thoughts about things that make you anxious. Even though you try to avoid thinking about them, you just can't. That's your brain not shutting off. The inability, the inability to tolerate uncertainty, you always need to know what's gonna happen next. So if the bus is late and you're worried, I don't know what's happening next because I'm not on schedule, I've lost track, you're constantly worrying about that. Inability to relax or enjoy quiet time. You might be trying to take time to yourself. Maybe take a nap, read a book, have some peace and quiet, and you can't because your mind's just worrying about what is next. It's almost like the fight or flight mode. Your brain is constantly going, what am I doing? Where am I going? Um, you put things off because you might feel overwhelmed. You might avoid situations that make you very anxious. Uh, you might not go to class, maybe. That might be one of them because you're very anxious about the material. You might feel like you don't understand it very well, so you'd rather just not go because you don't want to feel that anxiety. You might have tense, so muscle tension and body aches might be some of it. Have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep because your mind just won't shut off. And then you could also have physical symptoms as well, so nausea, the, your, t your stomach tightening, uh, stomach pain and probably constipation or even diarrhea. It, it can affect your health. Excuse me. Okay, continuation. What causes general anxiety disorder? The exact cause is unknown, but changes in the brain and environmental stress are major factors. It might be caused by problems in the functioning of the portion of the brain that regulate fear and other emotions. Studies have also, known, have also shown excuse me, that anxiety disorders run in families. Certain environmental factors such as trauma or significant events may trigger anxiety disorder. Also, you know, when it runs in a family, um, you, you can't handle stress well, you can't handle certain situations, you always, your mind is constantly going, or are you worried about what people think of you, or did I do this right, did I say that, say that right, and so, um, the body begins to 
uh, break down. Some people can't, body just can't take stress. And when people's body can't take too much stress, other things begin to happen. You have other factors that start to play a part. So also the, the importance of anxiety management. Anxiety disorders are one of the most common mental health problems on college campuses. Um, 40 million U.S. adults suffer from an anxiety disorder, and 75% of them experience their first episode anxiety by the age 22. When I think about the age 22, I guess that's the, uh, the age where we halfway through college and you're carrying on, you're getting more into your major, you're trying to juggle work, studies, and maybe extracurricular activities that you like to do, but you gotta stay, but you gotta stay focused. A 2008 survey of college students revealed the following. 80% say they frequently or sometimes experience daily stress. 34% have felt depressed at some point in the past three months. 13% have been diagnosed with anxiety disorder or depression. 9% have seriously considered suicide in the past years. When I think about depression, um, I have quite a few friends and even um, adolescents that I know that at this day and time, can you believe they suffer with depression? Um, and it's a serious um, disorder. So it's, it's good to kind of positively self-talk to yourself about things that's happening in your life or how you feel about situations in school and just if you keep um, talking positive and just stay on track and, and set some goals, eventually, you know, you hopefully, eventually, hopefully you get on track and things will turn around for you. The next thing is learning to manage anxiety. Three core symptoms of anxiety is excessive worry. Therefore, understanding worry plays a huge role in managing one's anxiety. The worry cycle is ir irrational beliefs and ideas, which leads to negative or irrational self-talk, leads to inappropriate feelings such as rage or fear, lead to negative outcomes related to tasks, other people, et cetera, and, and reinforces. So you have to constantly positive, positively talk to yourself and just work, work yourself through it, and hopefully things will get better. Um, I have a good example. Um, a young lady came in to see me today, and her belief is, and she's a good student, she says that she feels like she brings negativity to people. Like when she comes around someone, bad things begin to happen. Um, a young man asked her to, um, to begin to engage in conversation that the he, um, that's in her class, that they always talk. And this, this particular day, he said, she said she had to go across campus. He said, well, I'll give you a ride. She said, okay. So they walked to, walk to his car and get in the car, and the car didn't start. So he's trying to start it, and it was really cold that night. And so she um, suggested some things for him to do, and he didn't do it. And so he gets out, and he's underneath the hood pulling out you know, plugs and cords and said, I don't know why the car didn't start. And then she said, and then she said to him, I know why I didn't start. He said, why? He, she said, because of me. She said, I'm bad luck. He said, he looked at it. He didn't say nothing like his mind, like, I don't think so. So th her rational thing is, and she, and, and, you know, she's been this way for a while, saying that, oh, every time I come around so to someone or I go somewhere, it's me. And I said, no, that's not it. I said, it was cold that night, and the car didn't start. And then she said, so she left, and then the next day, um, when she saw him, he texted me. She said, did the car start? He said, yeah, you were right. I just said to my brother, she, he called his brother-in-law, and she said after the car sat down, like, he just turned it a couple times and where did it start it? And I said, see, so I said, so what's your solution? She said, I'm not bad luck. She said, but I've been thinking that way for so long. I said, then I said, stop the um, negative thoughts and begin to think positively of yourself. And she said, yeah, you're right. And so I told her, I said, you're not bad luck. It's just with the uh, that was the situation at hand that night. It was real cold. Okay, so some anxiety management techniques that you could use. So look at worries in a new way. Worrying is usually self-generated, self-thought. The trigger usually comes from outside, but an internal run and dialogue usually maintains inside yourself. And that's usually where anxiety itself comes from. You usually try to solve problems that haven't happened. You obsess over worst case scenarios. 
Uh, you focus in on the what if scenarios. What if I don't pass this test? What if I don't succeed in college? What if I fail? And sometimes it's constantly reminding yourself of the what if that hasn't even happened, maybe isn't even a possibility, can kind of bring you down and drag you down to actually completing a what if scenario when it doesn't even need to go that far. Some techniques that you could use are to learn to channel your irrational thoughts, learn how to postpone worries, worrying, and learn to accept uncertainties in your life. Nobody knows the future. If we did, I'm sure we would have all picked the right lottery numbers and we would have been millionaires on our own islands doing whatever we want. But nobody knows the future. So you just kind of got to roll with what life gives you. Um, some more techniques. So you could practice relaxation techniques. Uh, these are things such as muscle relaxation, deep breathing, meditation. These are all things that you can use to relax. So progressive muscle relaxation is basically where you tense your muscles and then release them for like a timeout. So if you all want to take a second, just try. Maybe if when you're taking a test, you feel very tense in your right or left forearm because you're writing and you have all this anxiety about what you're writing about, you might want to try to take a second, tense your right or left forearm muscle, and then release it and see if that releases some of the tension that you're feeling from anxiety. Another thing you might want to do is you might want to try deep breathing. So breathing deeply from your diaphragm, in through your nose, out through your mouth, deep breaths. Those can always calm people down. And also meditation. So research has shown that meditation could actually change your brain. With regular practice, meditation can boost your activity on the left side of your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that responds to feelings of seren serenity, <laughs> sorry, serenity and joy. And technique number three, so to learn how to calm down quickly, the best, best methods of self-soothing self incorporate one or more of the physical senses. So you have your vision, your hearing, your smell, your taste, and your touch. So you can try one of the following when feeling anxious. So for your sight, maybe take a walk around campus, take in the view, go to one of the museums, walk around your neighborhood maybe or try or look at a photo that or a book that might be very interesting to you and relaxing as far as sound you might want to listen to soothing music uh, maybe sounds of nature such as the birds oceans um, as far as smell you might want to light a scented candle smell flowers breathe in the clean fresh air or maybe even stop by a bakery <laughs> For taste, you can always cook a delicious meal and you could slowly eat that meal <laughs> and savor the flavor of it. <laughs> savor in each bite or enjoy a hot cup of coffee or hot chocolate or tea, something that might be a little bit more accessible in between classes if you need that break. And for touch, you might want to, if you have a, a pet, maybe a cat or a dog, you might want to go ahead and, and pet your dog or a cat. You could also take a bubble bath. You can uh, wrap yourself in a blanket or sit outside in the breeze or the sun, whichever is more enjoyable to you, or get a massage. Okay, anxiety management technique number five, become aware. That's four? I'm sorry, number four. Anxiety management technique number four, connect with others. There is strength in numbers. Identify unhealthy relationship patterns. Do you test your partner? Withdraw, make accusations, become clingy when you are feeling anxious about the relationship. Build a strong support system. Hang around, um, find some positive people. Find some older people who can give you some wisdom, who can give you, you know, some advice of when you um, feel like that you need a little pick me up, a word of the day, a positive word for today. Build a network of few people who you can trust and count on and be there for you. 
Talk it out when, you, when your worries start spiraling. Talk to a trusted family member or friend, someone who can give you a balanced, objective perspective. Know who to avoid when you are feeling anxious. When considering who to run to, ask yourself whether you tend to feel better or worse after talking to that person about a problem. Management anxiety technique number five. Become aware. Accept. Accept the um, anxiety. Re replace your rejection, anger, and hatred of it with acceptance. By resisting, you are prolonging the unpleasantness of it. W, watch your anxiety. Rate it on a scale of 0 to 10 and watch it go up and down. Be detached. The more you can separate yourself from the experience, the more you can just watch it. A, act with the, act with the anxiety. Act as if you aren't anxious. Repeat the steps. Continue to accept your anxiety. Watch it and act with it until it goes down to a comfortable level. E, accept the best. What you fear the most rarely happens. An um, example is, I feel like I'm a little bit in um, anxiety. So one night, I'm studying for the CPCE, and um, I guess I, um, my mind was going and going. I couldn't sleep, so I woke up at 1 o'clock, went to the bathroom, I laid down, and I laid down to 2 o'clock, to about 2.45. I said, you know what, let me get up. Got up, and I just started studying. Got the book, got a hot cup of tea, and started studying. And my fiance woke up and was like, where is she? He came out there, he, you know, and I said, I couldn't sleep, so. And I said, I'm anxious, so I said, well, I, what, what, what I could do best? I, so I just got up and just started studying. Anxiety management technique number five. Number six, I'm sorry. Number six, change your lifestyle. Adopt healthy eating habits. Avoid going too long without food. Eat plenty of complex carbs, such as whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. They will stabilize your blood sugar. They also boost serotonin, neutral transmitted with calming effects. Also, you know, um, I notice when you are worrying a lot and you have a lot of anxiety, you tend not to be hungry. And if you're not self-conscious, you'll go all day without eating because you're worrying too much. And then your energy level is going down. Limit caffeine and sugar. Stop drinking or cut back on caffeine beverages. Avoid sugary snacks, they tend to cause blood sugar to spike and then crash. Exercise regularly, that's a good one. When you're feeling um, a little tense and, and a lot of anxiety, when you start working out, exercise gives you, uh, it releases it. It makes you think of other things and you feel good. I mean, you constantly, if you're working out, you breathe and your mind tends to not think about it. And try to at least work out for 30 minutes of aerobic. On most days, avoid alcohol and nicotine. Alcohol temporarily reduces anxiety and worry, but it actually causes anxiety symptoms as it wears off. Last but not least, get enough sleep. When you're well rested, it's much easier to keep you emotional balanced. Any key factor in coping with anxiety and, and, stop, and stopping the worrying. Which technique is right for you? Is it group discussion or is it activities? Does anybody have a technique that we just talked about that they currently use or might be interested in using? Anybody want to share? Yes. Mm -hmm.
So very good. So you normalize it and you're very aware of when you're in a good way. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Everybody's going to feel it. So learning how to manage your anxiety and balance. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else want to share? Yes. Being always anxious in relation to your academic performance. Well, when you're all. Well, when you're always anxious and you always have what I'm going to call that red light off in your mind, the emergency light, it could really interfere with your grades. It could interfere with how you retain knowledge. You might go to class and you might not be able to take all the information that's being given to you, which then in turn, when you go for a quiz or a test, you might just have a blank mind because you weren't thinking about what the professor was saying. At that point, you were thinking about what was going on with you at that point. So ultimately, anxiety, if it gets to a high level, could begin to interfere not only with your school life, but also your work life, your family life, your personal life. It, it could interfere with all aspects. And it also, I think that it also takes away from focusing um, on the important things that when it's need to be um, geared towards focusing when you need it. Because you, your mind and your emotion is so all over the place and you're thinking, 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 your mind is constantly go going so you can't focus on what's really important. Yes. Yes, I was going to say that. Yes, that's a good point. And how you how you handle the, um, the uh, anxiety when, when it's coming from your environmental factors and keeping a balance. Yes, that is true. Yes. Yes. Now your heart is racing.
manage it. Yeah. So the, the key is to balance it and manage it. Okay. Yep. Thank you for sharing. Okay. The next, what, what to do when when you, or when your anxiety impacts your exam score negatively? Just what we just we're gonna come back. We just talked about it. Text. Text anxiety is extreme fear of performing poorly on examination. It has three basic components. Cognitive, negative thoughts, as we just discussed. Doubting academic abilities and intellectual competence. Affective causes and causes increased heart rate. Feeling of nausea, freaking urination, increased perspiration, cold hands, dry mouth behavioral aspect of it, causes procrastination, difficulty in interpreting information, and conceptualizing. So main sources of test anxiety. So usually, usually most students are concerned of how others will view them if they do poorly on a test. People will wonder, what, why did I do so poorly? What, do you, what will my parents think? What will my friends think? What, what will my teacher think? They really begin to question, you know, their own self-image. If I don't do well on the test, I guess that means that I'm not as smart as I thought. If I don't do well on the test, I guess that means I just, I can't do school. That's just not for me. It also, another main source is concerns about future security. So, Test performance is directly connected to your future success and security. Also concerns about not being prepared for a test. One of my problems is not knowing exactly when I am prepared for a test. People might have concerns if you're in a certain class and the teacher likes to do pop quizzes. That's usually a concern for students as well. Am I ready for this? Can I do this? I don't know if I can do this. So three main expressions of test anxiety. You have your bod bodily reaction. So you might have difficulty eating, sleeping, relaxing before an important test. You might have thought disruptions. So you're easily distracted while taking a test. You might be physically in math class taking a test, looking at a math problem, but you might be like, oh man, what am I do after this math class? I gotta hurry up and get in my car and run across campus and get to work. Your, your mind is not where in the test or where it should be in class. And then the other one is general test anxiety. So the uneasy feeling, the hollow uneasy feeling that you get before you take a test. It's usually that feeling when your stomach drops, like, oh man, this is like make or break time. And techniques for test anxiety. One thing you want to do is develop um, good sleeping habits. Develop and maintain a healthy diet. Exercise regularly to release some of that tension. Have oxygen going to the brain. Positive thoughts. Avoid cramming. Make sure you, you know, when you talk about cramming, you know, a lot of kids today, um, they put their the time in is off. And so they're trying to cram everything in one or two days and then have more days to do extracurricular activities instead of just focusing and just planning, well, I do some this day, I do some this little day. You know, plan it within the four days so you can have time to go back and, and recount what you studied and, te and retest yourself. Develop good study habits and good test taking skills. That way, if, if you um, give yourself a lot, of, uh, a lot of time management and uh, three or four days of studying, or if you need more, you'll do well. And it, you'll give yourself time to um, know the material and understand it. And also, the last, take deep breaths. When you enter in to take the exam, get there a little earlier. If you need to, just look over your notes. If not, just sit there, meditate, and breathe. And just relax and wait for the exam, and then each question, take your time, breathe, read it slowly. And a lot of time, if you take your time and breathe slowly and read the questions slowly and look at the keywords, you'd be surprised what will come back to you and what you remember and how quickly you remember it. So that's our um, talk, our group session on anxiety. 
we would like to um, look at the references. These are the references um, where we got our, uh, most of our information from. And um, thank you for coming out. I hope that we um, enlightened everyone and you enjoyed our group session on anxiety. Want to say something? Thank you. Anxiety mention. Thank you. Any questions, anyone? Feedback? Thoughts? A little bit. Deep breathing. Yep. Deep, deep breathing. Looking at, looking at Alicia. Looking at Miss Brown. Yeah. And try not to. And just trying to um, focus on the moment and just trying to mindfulness and bring the information that across. Where you make sure it's correct and that we can engage in conversation that we kind of can understand. But it's easier though. If people engage back and forth, you don't think as much. If I'm doing all the talking and no one is saying nothing, then we're like, uh, you like, and I'm, oh. do they like it? But it's, it makes you more comfortable when people are engaging back and forth with you. That means that they're tentative. They, they, they're engaged in, in, in your subject. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.